I'm Phil Jones and I'm here at American Musical Supply. I started my first speaker company in commercially in 1987. So like, I guess I've been designing speakers professionally. How many years is that? 31 years? Uh, I always wanted to be a, either a musician or an artist. You know, I wanted to go to art school or music college. And my parents said, get yourself a real job. You know, you know there's nothing that, don't, they said, if you become a musician, you're gonna uh, grow your hair long, you're gonna take drugs and you're gonna end up in jail. You know, I went, well. So I, I studied uh, electronics, but I was obsessed with sound quality. You know, like I always felt that um, today's music, you know, is kind of mixed with a lot of over compression and seems to be engineered for, for kids who got like these little Bluetooth speakers to their cell phone and, and all they can do is like, you know, like a, like a 2 dB dynamic range, you know, everything's flatlining, you know. But back in the days when we had like the first, like Led Zeppelin and uh, Genesis and Yes and Floyd and all the other stuff, it was dynamic. So I, I like that, that kind of dynamic, powerful sound, but I don't like like compressed, soggy, distorted sound that people get on their boom boxes. You know, it's a different thing, you know. So I always wanted to get that, that holy grail of like sound where, where the system is invisible and the music just comes through. It's like a window, you know, you, you have a dirty pane of window and you open the window and like you see this beautiful view and nothing distorted. That's the kind of, to me, how sound should be. I, I built my first bass guitar in 19... 68 when I was 14 and then I built my first amp when I was like 15 in school figured out how to put it together and uh, I used to make uh, pedals and things out of uh, uh, tobacco tin boxes and things I put like fuzz boxes in and phasers and you know EQs and things and then I started building I built the ba and then I built my first speaker cabinet around the same time and I, I found these speakers that were five dollars a piece. They were, they were shit speakers, Baker speakers, about a four by twelve. It weighed a ton, you know. And it was like made out of like chipboard or something, and the, this hundred watt amp. But slowly, I, I got into building more and more speakers. So I built my first speaker. Um, I guess how like, like 50, 49 years ago or something like that. I built my first speaker. Um, I was working with a guy called Tony Atoria. We had a he had a hit in the charts with a song called I Can Prove It, uh, that's kind of a disco thing. And I was playing with all, all the guys in the band were really good. When I left that band, uh, Pino Palladino took over my job because we grew up together. We, we'd played in different bands, the same circle of musicians back in Cardiff. And then uh, I moved, uh, I went to Iran and lived in a, uh, in a war zone. When the American hostage crisis was going on, I was there working as an electronics engineer. And you wonder what the hell I was doing. Well, I did it for money, you know. Nothing other than I wanted to have a business and I wanted to have a recording studio and a PA company. And the only way to do it was, was to make some money and I didn't have any. So I quit playing as a full-time bass player and uh, went back to electronics and worked for two years in Iran so I could save enough money. And I moved to, to London and started a PA company, pioneered the use of ferrofluids in uh, compression drivers so they wouldn't blow and have better uh, dynamic range with less thermal compression. And in 1980, I was building subwoofers for PA, which was unheard of. Nobody was using subwoofers in 1980. So like a few things, I, in 1968, I was playing fretless bass. In 1980, I was using, uh, when I was playing, I was still playing in bands back then and had a PA company. And uh, I built subwoofers and I was using a horn for bass guitar. So I was like doing all those things like when people thought I was nuts, you know. So then I came up with this concept of doing uh, small speakers, which really came from when I was doing studio monitors. I uh, always wanted to build bass amps because I, I started off with my, my love was bass. I love the bass instrument. When I had uh, the resources, when I was doing uh, hi-fi and making home theater gear, I said, I like, you know, I like making the money doing this, but I really want to do bass amps, and I thought I could do a better bass amp than anyone else. So I started Phil Jones Bass, PJB. We started off first of all with 24, 16 big horn loaded cabinets, and then I realized after that people were going for smaller, you know, people didn't need the big stuff anymore. The, 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 the bass rig didn't need to fill the whole hole, it was going through PA. So we started making, uh, more powerful and smaller bass cabinets has just evolved from there. And that's why this here is, is probably one of the most powerful 
combo base amps on the market is 750 watts. I don't know if there's many 750 watt combos out there, but you can gig with this anywhere, you know, pretty much. If you want to check out the line of uh, PJB amplifiers, our homepage is uh, pjbworld.com where you can see all the specs and all the, the info on each of the product. And if you want to buy it, you go to AmericanMusical.com.